what's going on YouTube uh, it's been a long time and I ended up uh, opportunity here for another diesel series that uh, I figured I'd go ahead and take advantage of uh, what we've got here is an ALH uh, from an 03 Jetta that uh, it's been modified pretty heavily over the last few years and the owner of the car this is actually going to be his third engine and he asked and decided to uh, go ahead and build this one try and bulletproof it a little bit so that he doesn't pop motors anymore um, this particular car it's set up on a Kerma 1726 turbocharger race 520 injectors so it's 11 mil pump everything you can put on an ALH basically has been done to this car and this will be his third motor that he's gone through so um, we got the block back from the machine shop um, what we ended up going with is we've got some 81 millimeter pistons uh, from PD application from Europe uh, I believe they're ARL pistons if I'm not mistaken uh, we've got some rods from dark side uh, of course fresh bearings and ARP hardware for the mains and the uh, cylinder head uh, we got our uh, crankshaft back it's been freshly polished ready to go and while the head was at the machine shop it received dual valve springs um, and got a little bit of a polish nothing crazy um, just kind of smooth it out a little bit on these on these engines it does, it's not a huge benefit to do any type of uh, head work uh, as far as performance but what it does do you change the surface to make it a little bit smoother and carbon doesn't stick uh, as as easily as it does to a rougher casting so it's more of a longevity thing than a performance uh, type of modification but uh, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna show you guys you know how to assemble this which a lot of this is gonna be uh, general engine assembly information uh, but for the ALH specifically show you how to measure piston protrusion to select your head gasket uh, if you did not know Volkswagen has three thicknesses of a head gasket um, indicated by one two or three hole uh, designation uh, and that ends up determining you know how well the the engine runs um, over time if you've got too much too thick of a gasket it's going to run bad it's going to smoke it's going to have slow starts if it's too tight you're going to have mechanical damage so i'm going to show you how to how to measure for that and of course that ring gap and all this stuff this alh here you know originally is a 1.9 uh the original bore is a 79 millimeter and now we're at 81 which is effectively a a, a stock bore piston uh for a two liter tdi the, uh, from my understanding, the, uh, the stroke is the same on both. So this is effectively going to be a two liter ALH now, um, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna set things up and just kind of show you how to get all of this into there. So the first thing that we always do when, the, when any motor comes back from the machine shop is we gotta clean it and we've gotta do a few things just to make sure that it's ready to go uh, my first step is typically always cleaning the deck surface and running a tap down the head bolt holes now what I do I, sp I spray some penetrating oil down the holes and let it soak for a few minutes and then I run the appropriate tap down there this isn't necessarily needed um, if you're using stock head bolts uh, it's it's good practice uh, but for studs, it is it is recommended by the manufacturer to do this, uh, just to make sure that your stud uh, goes in as, as deeply as it's supposed to. So just take care, do all your holes, run it in, and uh, hopefully you're not actually cutting threads. It's, it's not meant to cut threads, you're just more reforming them a little bit. So they're just clean, okay? It just makes sure that at the end, all of your head studs are at the same height uh, so you're getting as as good clamping force as you can possibly get um, now just because an engine comes back from the machine shop does not mean that it's clean and ready to assemble that's that's on you unless you pay for that service um, 
my machine shop doesn't do that he does hot tank blocks and gets all the grime and stuff off there uh, but it's on me to make it a sterile surface for for assembly so you're going to want to go through clean your head bolts clean your deck surface blow out your your oil galleys and stuff and and make sure that it's that it's good for assembly now this video series is going to be filmed uh over a couple days um i'm not going to have be able to just kind of dedicated work on this alone um so it's going to be quite a few cuts in and out of different steps but i'm going to try to show you all of the steps so that you have a full understanding of what's going on here so what i'm talking about oil uh, galleys and blowing them out uh, i'm talking about these holes here all right these are what supplies oil to the main bearings okay and then you've got another a couple more ports these ports here are for your uh, oil spray jets um so you want to blow those out make sure that's nice and clean you can th throw some air through here uh, this is where your oil pump has its uh, feed and return the main oil supply and then there's actually another one right here uh, I think that is I can't remember um, but yeah that's that's what I mean by so when I'm talking about spraying out your oil galleys this is what I'm talking about so these ports you can see on every main journal okay these are what supplies oil to the main bearings okay uh, you also have these ports down here those are for your oil spray jets okay you want to blow those out and I just mean take compressed shop air um, and just just spray it out okay just make sure there's no crud or anything in there um, you can see this is nice and clean it's very much, uh, I guess it's not soiled or anything, uh, but just being at the machine shop, I can actually show you just like these little pieces of metal, okay? I mean, that, that happens, all right? It's, they cut metal all day long. So that's kind of the importance of uh, cleaning this stuff and blowing these things out. You know, just take an air wand, blow all the holes out, make sure there's no RTV in anything. And just make sure it's nice and good to go uh, just to try and make sure you've got as few contaminants as possible you're not going to get them all but you know take an hour or so clean it really good clean it again and then maybe clean it one more time and you should be good to assemble so the first thing that we're going to do is we have to measure our main oil clearance um, I'm using ARP main studs on this, so keep that in mind. If you're going to use ARP main studs in your build, that's what you need to measure with. If you're using stock bolts, you need to do stock bolts. With stock main bolts for checking clearance, so it's a torque spec and then a stretch, you're just going to do the torque spec for checking the main clearance. Um, just make sure everything's clean, thread these in. And then what I'm going to use, I'm going to use plastic gauge on this because it's easier to see and it's easier for most people to get. Um, if you're fancy, you can get the, the bore gauge and stuff, but uh, plastic gauge is pretty, pretty accurate to what I've seen. So yeah, that's what we're going to go with. So this is what plastic gauge looks like. It comes in about a one foot stick. So it's got measurements for millimeter measurements for inches so our clearance that we're looking for here okay in the Bentley it's going to show up as radial clearance and then when we check the end play it says axial just so you're not confused we're looking for 0.03 to 0.08 millimeters so if you look at the plastic gauge kind of fits in the range we're looking for Okay, now what it is, if you open this up, it's a tiny little strip. We're gonna cut this in little sections. And we're gonna lay it on the journal this way. Okay, and then we're gonna put the caps back on and torque it to the spec, which for the studs is 
three equal steps of 60 foot pounds. All right. Then once we do that, we take the caps off and then we're going to measure the squish with that little gauge right there. Now, one thing I want to point out, the set of bearings that I have are a glyco set. So it has integrated uh, thrust washers okay, in the bearing. Um, this is an older style. Used to see this a lot on Mark IIs, Mark III's. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm actually pretty excited to see this um, for a newer, newer build. But one thing that it does come with, you got this uh, uh, oil grooved bearing here. So I'll, typically you see a, a flat surface like this. Well, Glyco specifies that it needs to go on cap four for improved oil flow, whatever they found. But yeah, that's just specific to this Glyco set. Otherwise, otherwise this style is going to be on the uh, the upper bearings, and then these are your lower bearings. So this is what the plastic gauge looks like uh, before it is squished. Okay. You can actually see I offset these because this has the oiling journal in the side, so it's not going to crush in the middle. So in order to see it, you actually have to offset this one. Then this one has the double oil journal, so same thing. Um, yeah. And then with the ARP studs, you need to lubricate the threads. And then as it goes on, I'm going to lubricate the washers on both sides and this part of the the nuts um, you want to carefully uh, put your bearing caps on you want to try not to do any hammering or anything with getting the caps on just kind of slowly uh, use your threads to uh, walk them down and then tor we're going to torque it to that spec that 60 foot pounds and we're going to take them off and see what we get all right so i got them all torqued down okay to that 60 foot pounds uh, but I kind of thought about something, so uh, what you do not turn the crank while you're checking this clearance. Also, do not lubricate the crank with any assembly lube at this time, okay? Uh, the assembly lube can actually give you inconsistent readings on what your oil clearance actually is. So, although it seems logical, you're, uh, you're, we're going to be taking this apart again, cleaning it before final assembly. So basically when you build a motor, you're going to do it twice. Um, sometimes a little more, depending on if you have issues or whatever. But uh, yeah, so now we're going to take all the caps off and see what kind of measurements we have. All right, so this is what the plastic gauge looks like once it is crushed, okay? So then you're just going to hold up, see if I can figure out how to do this while holding. Okay. You see how that kind of it's a little in between? So you kind of call it probably 0.06, something like that. It seems to be it's a little pretty, pretty similar. The same on this one similar and actually for my other two I ended up on the cap let's see 0.05 which is kind of right in the middle of our spec so uh, as far as our main clearance goes we are good to go uh, so now I'm gonna pull this out I'm gonna clean you gotta clean the uh, plastic dip off. That is not a lubricant. And then we're gonna move to checking the rods. So unfortunately, uh, looks like the rods that I have are, uh, they, they're tanged, and the rod bearings that I have are tangless. Um, so I'm gonna have to order the right bearings and wait for that to show up before I can continue. Um, so with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and end this as a part one of uh, measuring the oil clearance on this. And then, yeah, once we continue on, I'll post another video with more work getting done. So thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.